folks uh, thinking slow here so I wanted to do a video uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while it's a look back at uh, lockdown and to work out who won from the lockdown and that's a hard thing to get into people's heads uh, for most of us lockdown was a total and utter disaster um, on so many different levels um, but what people are not aware of and what hasn't really been covered is that a very small group of people made a mind-boggling amount of money during the lockdown period they made 6.4 trillion dollars <laughs> that's a lot of money um, and I'm going to show you who those people were and how they made that money because I think that tells us uh, that there certainly was an interest group that would would benefit from lockdown and we need to think about that more carefully and look at something what I call a qui bono uh, analysis who benefits so I'm going to look at the uber wealthy what happened to them during lockdown I'm going to look at the social engineers and uh, say a couple of words about online businesses which have a little bit been covered in the press but not that much and certainly the first two groups have not been really covered at all in the press uh, as huge beneficiaries of lockdown. So uh, I'm not going to go through this uh, graph but what it really shows is the net worth of the top 0.1% uh, in America and the Federal Reserve balance sheet which is basically money printing and those two things really go up uh, almost identically together and the interesting thing is the gray line uh, you might be able to see there is, is really the beginning of lockdown and you can see uh, the net worth of the 0.1% beginning to go down a bit and then that is immediately compensated by huge amounts of money printing and then of course that sets off an increase in the net worth of those 0.1% uh, and that is because the 0.1% owns a lot of financial assets so bits of paper in shares and debt uh, securities uh, that are not owned by Joe Bloggs and what happened here is um, the value of their holdings went from um, I think it was 12.1 trillion uh, up to 18.5 trillion so the net gain was uh, 6.4 trillion over that period during lockdown so you can see that thin blue line going up and up and up so that works out about 20 million dollars per head uh, of that group of the wealthiest 0.1 percent so they benefited tremendously from lockdown because lockdown triggered sort of almost limitless money printing so this is a constituency that benefited from this insane policy response and we're going to come back to that uh, and we can look also at obviously the big tech uh, entrepreneurs benefited in a big way and we had those insane scenes where you know uh, shops could open but certain aisles had to be closed allegedly for disease control which is completely insane when you think about it now looking back at that but it was insane at the time to be honest uh, and during the lockdown period uh, Jeff Bezos personally made 90 billion 90 billion nine zero billion dollars in stock gains over the lockdown period as um, you know not only from the money printing but also because his business model was the only show in town as all the bricks and mortar uh, businesses had to be shut down or were shut down by lockdown so another huge beneficiary from this whole crazy uh, exercise now the next group are the social engineers and before uh, these things started popping out on the world economic forum website i'd already speculated that this whole thing had nothing to do with uh, a coronavirus it had everything to do with social engineering and re-engineering society and as soon as these little articles came popping up on the world economic forum site uh, that was really confirmed so just looking at a couple of these headlines uh, the covid silver linings playbook the unexpected benefits of virtual education uh, why business as usual is not an option after covid and emissions fell during lockdown let's keep it that way so these are all bigging up the so-called benefits of lockdown so you've got this whole group of social engineers that want to reorganize society that also are saying lockdown was a good idea um, 
And then, of course, they wrote this book called COVID-19, The Great Reset. I mean, it couldn't be less subtle. They're telling you right there and then that they leveraged this whole episode in order to achieve their social engineering goals. And a lot of people still will just roll their eyes, oh, you know, conspiracy theory. But, you know, this is the book. It's a physical reality. You can read it. It goes on for hundreds of, it goes on for uh 280 pages worth of stuff and essentially what it's saying is that the 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 methods that we ad adopted during lockdown sort of not going out uh, staying in being locked in our houses uh should be made more or less permanent uh that is a very short summary of what's in there of course there's a lot more than that but you know, again, they, they're telling you right here that they leveraged COVID in order to achieve their great reset. They actually wanted to, to do this. And that is borne out by the people that caused the panic. If you look back at who started the herd uh, into a panic, it's the, it's the usual suspects, Bill Gates, George Soros, and Klaus Schwab. And if you look at what they said during COVID, so this is February 2020, Bill Gates once in a century pathogen we've been worried about. That's that's a direct quote from George Soros in May 2020. This is the crisis of my lifetime. And he was born in 1930. <clears throat> Klaus Schwab, June 2020, the most severe crisis the world has experienced since World War II. Now, in reality, <clears throat> we know ex post that the infection fatality rate was 0.03%. Uh, for the under 60s so it's kind of nothing it was it was a a bad seasonal flu and nothing more than that now <clears throat> that's not something we've had to wait years to figure out because it was clear in march 2020 from the diamond princess data that this covid was not in any way the calamity that was predicted by ferguson and his completely false model and you know i can prove that by the twin uh, the pin tweet you'll see as from early 2020, that was clear that this that the imperial model was wrong. Um, and so anybody keep keeps pushing this narrative beyond about March 2020 is lying. And also you saw that through the empty hospitals in April 2020. That is confirmed by National Audit Office statistics. The All the beds that they emptied out, they were hardly any of them were used. So we knew in early 2020, that these, uh, you know, doom predictions were completely wrong. But yet these guys, the oligarchy is still pushing this narrative and still causing this panic. Now also remember these guys deal, at least in Gates and Soros, they're dealing with billions of dollars at risk every day. So these are not silly people. I think this is one of the big messages from the video is don't assume all these guys just got a couple of simple ratios wrong. Uh, assume because they're billionaires and at the, they're the top of the food chain, they know what they're doing, um, and they are deliberately doing bad things. I think that's what I'm going to try and suggest. Um, now that um, that kind of panic led to the government shredding the pandemic response plan, and this is the pandemic response plan. I mean, in a word, you can see really what the emphasis is: is business as usual. And the reason they were able to do that is because um, oligarch organizations have enormous, enormous lobbying ability. A regular foundation can spend a couple of hundred million dollars a year based on a five billion dollar asset base on lobbying. And they have far more political power in terms of money than almost any political party, certainly in the UK, the, the money that political parties have. Uh, access to is is a drop in the ocean compared to the money that these foundations have. So they have uh, enormous lobbying capability. And we know, you know, ultimately in the UK, the decision uh, was kind of on a knife edge. And we've got these completely crazy guys like um, the special advisors, um, Lee Kane, who is a, a red top journalist from the Mirror, you know, had enormous influence over this. And of course, Dominic Cummings and Dominic Cummings talks endlessly and lovingly about people associated with Bill Gates. And he's clearly under their influence uh, one way or another. And those guys um, managed to tip this whole thing into lockdown. 
And of course, we know that Bill Gates uh, funded, uh, I think it's $300 million he's provided to Imperial College, who of course uh, were involved in producing the model that triggered the panic. So you've got a lot of, um, a, a lot of um, arrows all pointing in the same direction there. That's how we were tipped into lockdown, a policy that benefited a tiny fraction of the population through gigantic financial gains and provided the excuse for social engineering. Um, and lockdowns don't work. I mean, that's the other thing that the lockdown, the COVID inquiry is completely ignoring, but there's plenty of evidence, including this important paper from John Ioannidis. Um, you know, they, they've couched it more diplomatically and scientifically than that, saying, while small benefits cannot be exclude, excluded, we do not find significant benefits on case growth of more restrictive NPIs. So essentially, lockdowns don't work. You know, there were measures that could have been taken, uh, and that was it. The additional draconian lockdowns added nothing uh, to slowing the growth of cases. And in fact, I remember looking at this paper, and you can find some countries where case numbers started going up uh, when, when lockdown started. So they don't work. Um, you know, that's something also to be aware of. So I think we have more or less the sort of necessary elements for a crime. We've got motivation, which is $6.4 trillion increase in the net worth of 0.1% of the wealthiest in the United States. We've got the method, which is the gigantic lobbying resources of a handful of foundations. Uh, as I said, spending two, three, four hundred million dollars per year is an option for a large foundation with an asset base of about five billion. So a handful of people behind those foundations could could actually swamp the whole political arena because political parties don't have anything like that kind of money in most countries. So and the last thing you need is opportunity. And you know, we've seen that through our politicians. The one thing that this hopeless COVID inquiry in the UK has shown us is how much of this is all seat of the pants nonsense um, uh, between Dominic Cummings, Boris Johnson, and this Lee Kane red top journalist. You know, ultimately, those were the people arguing over WhatsApp about lockdowns. It really, there was really no science in this. And, and all the, most of the rest of it, the parliament and the cabinet was just theatre. So if you're a well-organized, well-funded oligarch and you want a policy changed, you can do that because you have the resources and you have these kind of hopeless politicians who surround themselves with special advisors and just seem to do this kind of stuff on the hoof, which is really the reality of how the lockdowns uh, came into play. And then, of course, it's a chain reaction around the world. Um, and we covered in another in another discussion uh, that you know they don't want to be left out. They don't want to be seen to be not doing enough. So it's better to do lockdown, leave office, and then work out it was a disaster later when there's no accountability. Now, what, one of the reasons I also wanted to do this video is to try and see if there's a pattern because in a lot of what's going on now, so lockdowns, obviously, we've looked at because of the money printing, mass vaccination, proxy wars, and the green stuff. Um, they got common threads and all of those things so they're transferring a huge amount of wealth to vested interests generally at the expense of the public um, and what's important about these you know you could say that about any sort of uh, public investment project but what's important about these projects is they leave you with nothing they leave you with problems so of course the lockdowns just left a huge pile of debt which was incurred for, for, for nothing. There were no, no assets were created. It was just money burned. So that's left the whole nation poorer and it's left people with higher future taxes in order to deal with all the debt that was created. The same with mass vaccination, completely unnecessary, um, totally unnecessary for almost everyone that had it. Um, and then of course, you've got the consequences of that policy as well. And of course, Proxy wars never benefit really anyone uh, other than vested interests. So, you know, everybody loses on both sides in terms of population on proxy wars, but a small, narrow group of people uh, tend to get wealthy 
And if they sort of win uh, the proxy war, then they will reap benefits from that that will not accrue to the people. And in most of these cases, obviously not in the war, but in the cases of mass vaccination, lockdown, and all the green stuff, um, the whole policy is based on models. And as we know from the COVID debacle, all the models were fake, that they produced garbage results, garbage in, garbage out, garbage calculations. And um, you can implement a policy just based on smoke and mirrors if you're going to invest that much faith in these models. And as I said, a lot, a lot of these models, the people producing them are also then linked in via funding with the oligarchy. So the whole thing looks pretty suspicious uh, to my mind. And I think this is a generic pattern. We're going we're gonna to be fleeced um, and money is going to keep being transferred to these vested interests for this, for this kind of policy response uh, unless we can put a stop to it. And that was one of the reasons to make the video. So um, I'm I'm now um, not going on the you know these guys are really stupid you know this kind of sounds like a complaint a lot of people have in their companies like my dumb boss well you know your dumb boss is your boss so how dumb is your boss actually um, and you know you have to really wonder how much of a mistake this policy was that ended up uh, helping to enrich a tiny portion of the population by $6.4 trillion. Was it really that much of a mistake? Certainly for them, it wasn't a mistake. It was a huge financial benefit. So, um, you know, I think that's a sensible way of looking at this rather than this is just a whole bunch of uh, guys with no clue about what they're doing. That's, it's very possible the pol political side had no clue about what they were doing. But I'm, I think the guys at the top of the food chain understand exactly what they're doing. That's my view. Um, and then on solutions, uh, I've, I've written a paper on solutions. And the only thing I really want to say about that is uh, if you do value liberty, and that's that's kind of a big if as well. I'm not sure how many people really put that bigger value on their God-given inalienable rights. Uh, then you have to basically stand up and uh, fight for them, not physically, but politically. And that involves grassroots politics. You're never going to have a big ticket expensive political solution given to you on a plate uh, 99 times out of 100 that's just going to be an oligarch controlled charade which i think is what reform is so it's going to require rolling up your sleeves and getting involved in a, in a heritage party in the uk or the alliance for democracy and freedom or just standing as an independent uh, if there is a solution that's what it is um, but there's not really that much sign of that understanding happening yet um, or much sign of people volunteering the time and effort to get involved in those organizations. I think there's still a wrong and passive uh, expectation that someone's going to hand you a solution on a plate. You're going to put an X in the box somewhere and everything will be fine. It's not going to work like that. It's going to require real effort to stand up to this um, oligarchy. And under <clears throat> under the labor regime, it's going to get worse. Um, I'm going to do a separate note about that, but they they really are going to build a totalitarian government. And again, the vested interests will benefit from that and individual liberty will be crushed. And again, we'll be left with no assets. It's just going to be a huge wealth transfer for no real benefits. So uh, things are going to get worse uh, in the near future on that stuff. So um, if you've been following us for some time, you know that we warned uh, about the imperial model that it was completely unreli unreliable. You can see that in the um, pinned tweet. Uh, we warned about the lockdowns. We warned about the medical product. Uh, we warned about the Great Reset agenda. Uh, we've provided a lot of analysis on the election outcomes and so on and so forth. And we've, we've drawn um, network maps showing how this whole sort of oligarchy foundation structure works. But to keep doing that work, uh, we really need people to become involved and to sign up on Patreon and Substack. And that's the only way also to get access to all of the research. And the important thing for us is we try and show you the workings. So we're not asking people to believe uh, a sort of conspiracy theory in inverted commas. Uh, we're saying, look, this is the conclusion. Um, and all conclusions are provisional because anyone that tells you they definitely know you know, if this is a conspiracy theory or not, it's probably misleading you. It's all about balance of probability. It's about the evidence that we have access to. And we do actually have access to a lot of evidence. 
Um, that is one reason why we may enjoy some reasonable level of success is a lot of the data is actually out there if you know where to look and how to analyze it. But to do that, um, we need people to to participate through Patreon or through Substack. And uh, I mean, I remember back in the real world, um, then uh, at, at times like that, this, this analysis actually had a decent market price. So of course, uh, we're not going to be able to get anything like that uh, on this kind of voluntary basis, but it needs to be something to keep the wolf from the door and in 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 reality we should have really shut this whole thing down uh because we're not able to wash our face on this at the moment so if you've got if you've obtained value from the work that we've done i hope you have um certainly we've got a lot of dozens and dozens probably hundreds now of nice notes from different people but we really need people to participate in the funding and then that gives them access to all of the research so um, please put this on pause and go over and sign up if you haven't already done so. And um, in the meantime, stay free. Thank you very much. Bye.